Hey guys, I'm Zoltan from Phalanx Miniatures, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll try to make a little bit of a dent into my pile of shame and paint 5 marines in a speed painting fashion in less than 4 hours and without using an airbrush, well, except for the priming. Since I only had 4 hours for this, I had to come up with a plan. So let's start with step 1 out of 5. This is the only time I'm using the airbrush in this video, but if you want to replicate the technique, you can simply use a retro can to achieve basically the same thing. If I want to go fast, I need to use contrast paints, and in order for those to work, I need a very bright undercoat. I could have primed the minis with white primer, but that would result in way less contrast compared to a zenithal highlight. With the zenithal, our shadows will be darker and the parts hit by the light will be brighter and way more saturated once the contrast paint is applied. The trick here is to go a bit harder with the zenithal and apply more white than what you would use normally. The blue I'll be using will look almost black if I apply it on the black primer directly, so the majority of the mini needs to have some level of white on it, except the deeper shadows. First problem, I hate how ultramarine blue contrast looks when it dries. It is way too dark and purplish to my liking. The marines will look nothing like what we are used to on the box art if I use it. To fix it I mix some Talisar blue in with the ultramarine blue on my wet palette in something like a 50-50 mixture. This will give me the nice rich blue color I'm looking for. The second problem is contrast paint itself. It is great because it pulls in the crevices creating contrast, hence the name, but that also means that if it has nowhere to go, like on the large smooth surfaces of Space Marine armor, it will pull and leave big blotches behind if applied as intended. You can mitigate this by moving the paint around with your brush after you applied most of the paint from the brush onto the model. Contrast dries relatively slowly, so there is time to drag the biggest pools away from the big surfaces like the pauldrons or the leg armor. On models with more surface details, I would just apply a large amount of contrast and let it self-level and do its thing, but that doesn't work here unless I'm okay with an extremely blotchy end result. Since I didn't have much time, I just tried my best to prevent the biggest blotches by moving the paint and applying two relatively thin layers instead of the usual single thick one. I wasn't looking for a perfect result, since I had a plan to mitigate the blotchiness with some of my later steps. It took me a bit less than an hour to finish all the blue on the 5 marines, and the end result doesn't look too bad. The last 3 marines turned out much smoother than the first two, as I got better at working with the contrast on the surface. I really like the blue that I created here, I need to remember this ultramarine plus Talasar contrast combo. Due to the time constraint, I decided to use less colors than usual. Bar red for the boulders, since that is the color scheme for my army. This color barely behaves like a contrast paint and covers incredibly well. Black legion for the joints and the mechanical parts of the boulders. I decided to use a lot of black and less metal so I can skimp on the metal shading and highlights. A couple of small highlights in the ends and the black will look good enough. Snakebite leather for the leather parts. I could have used black for these elements, but I felt confident that I can finish in time and wanted to add a bit more color variety. Creed camo for some of the grenades. I could have used metal or black again, but once again I thought I could get away with it. Nastra yellow for the bases. This color looks fantastic on the zenithal highlight and it contrasts nicely with the blue armor. Other than these, I only used Gilliman Flash for the head of the sergeant and the oath papers on some of the marines. Fortunately, I was left with very little that had to be painted metal. 
for the gold, it was mainly some skulls and the trim of the left shoulder pad. That tribute's armor never disappoints, and the gold looks fantastic on the blue. The steel parts were handled by our old friend Vlad Belcher. With that, basically all the main colors were on the minis, and I was ready for the more fancy steps. It took me a bit more than 15 minutes to do these parts. It is a lot of colors, but much less surface to cover, and I had to be way less careful than with the blue. That brings me to 1 hour 50 minutes, give or take. Plenty of time to finish on schedule. Before I jump to the next step, I snuck in painting the eyes with the usual combination of Mephisto and Red, Evos and Scarlet and Fire Dragon Bright. Took less than 10 minutes overall, I guess this is second nature by now. This is step 4.5 because this step is completely optional. However, I thought it would be worth the time it will take since the white transfers add a lot of interest to the models, but also because they can be used to cover up some of the most obvious blotches the contrast left behind on the pauldrons. I'm not sure about you, but transfers are the bane of my existence. I always mess them up and this time I wanted to be fast too. For some reason, some of the transfers I tried to use simply disintegrated as soon as they got wet. Maybe it was a very old cheat or I am not sure, but this step took me way more time than I expected. But I finally managed to get some markings on both shoulders. Some of them looked really messy, but I wasn't too concerned because of what I had planned for the next step. Before that, I applied a spray of matte varnish to all of the models though. One of the biggest downsides of Citadel Contrast is its extreme glossiness. I wanted to knock that back a bit, plus I wanted to secure the transfers under a layer of varnish. A little bit of Rhinox hide and a torn piece of sponge can do wonders to create some random damage on the armor. You could say that this step is optional too, but I wanted to achieve multiple things with it. First of all, I wanted to cover more of the blotchiness of the armor by covering it with damage. This plus the transfers will account for a lot of the most obvious blotches. I also wanted to mostly skip the edge highlighting step on these models, but still wanted to have some brighter spots on the armor. Adding a little bit of Fendrisian grey under the Rhinox hide spots does exactly that, plus it makes the damage more three-dimensional and real looking. I even added a couple of spots of lead bircher inside the biggest Rhinox hide spots to make the damage look even deeper. Since I was already at it, I added a couple of token edge highlights and scratches here and there, but tried to stop myself since that was not the plan here and I didn't want to waste time. With all that done, all that was left was to finish the bases. I used my tried and true method of applying dry rust pigment on the base and the feet of the marines and then fixing it in place with white spirit. It may look like the spirits ruined the whole thing, but once it dries, the pigment will look like dust again and it will be stuck to the base. And with that, I was done and the end result looks like this. At the end of the day, I had time to spare, and if I hadn't messed up with the transfers, I could have finished it in close to 3 hours. For the amount of time spent, I think these dudes look quite cool. I could definitely improve them further with some proper edge highlights, but I think I'm quite happy with them as they are. I hope you guys found something useful for your own speed painting. Do you think this is a reasonable amount of time to paint 5 marines? Do you usually take longer or shorter? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you in the next one.